This is Stock Retail again, and um, maybe recently you might have seen I had a video on why I believe a, a yes vote on the conversion and reverse split uh, will mean less dilution, uh, something we all want to, to see. We want to keep more value in, in the shares we have. And today, because dilution is such a topic, uh, such a hot topic for so long, I want to just talk through how dilution even works and how value creation even works so we can all have a right understanding of what this means, especially when... Um, shorts and shills try to kind of come at us about dilution. Just great to really understand the mechanics of it and understand what it means to AMC and frankly what it means to any stock you invest in. So I want to go through that today, but it, you know, if you haven't um, seen my other video on uh, the vote, you might take a look at that. Um, I'm very sort of, uh, I approach it neutrally and just tell you how I'm thinking. I don't ask you to necessarily vote the same way as I do, so it might even just help you think it through even if you disagree with me. Um, and then also I've got a lot of other videos kind of about forecasting the business itself. That's sort of my background um, is sort of forecasting future business. So I used to do that for a large company. So without further ado, I'll dive in. Hopefully also I've got my mic fixed. Had a few friends tease me that I was a little too quiet last time, um, but hopefully you can hear me. So first thing, just at a very simple level, think of market cap. So sometimes you hear about market cap. You can actually find out what AMC's current market cap is. Um, I'll talk about that a little too. Think of market cap as the size of the whole pie. It's the size of a business, or really the size of how much the entire stock market has valued that business. Um, and think of a share, uh, you know, we share the pie. You have a share of the pie. So any shares you hold are just a piece of that total market cap. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that in detail. So here's an example. Let's say there are two companies and one has 100 shares at $10 each and one has a thousand shares at a dollar each, those are actually the same. Um, if you bought a hundred dollars worth of shares in either one, you're gonna own 10% of that company. By the way, that's another thing I'm trying to help people sort of talk about when they talk about post reverse split. Um, some people are talking in absolute values of, oh, a share has to go to 500 to be this, or has to go to a thousand to be that. If you talk in terms of percents, you start to see really quickly, there's really no difference. So that's kind of important to understand. Um, and then just simple again, staying real simple here, and then we'll, we'll get a little more complicated in a minute. Uh, dilution is just more slices. You've taken the same pie, the market cap, the market value of a company, and you've just split it into more shares. So pretty simple, easy to understand so far, right? In this illustration, um, we're not changing the market cap. That pie stayed the same, we just cut it into more slices. But what happens if the value of the company actually increases? What if the size of the pie itself grows? So like in an example here, on the left, we've got this pie is cut in eight pieces. Let's say this pie was worth 16 bucks. And so if you had one piece of that pie, technically it's probably worth $2. Um, and then let's say the pie on the right is worth $32. These are technically, you know, um, thinner slices. It's one sixteenth you own now, but it's of a bigger pie and it's, a piece is still worth two dollars so in this case there's been dilution but you haven't lost value in your share per se the company itself has gotten bigger the size of the pie has gotten bigger um, and i want to talk about that as a concept because that's going to touch on how you create value in businesses and so if you just think of value creation you know we talk about stonks going up right and some, sometimes we say that jokingly sometimes we say it seriously and sometimes we're just sad that our stonks went down and so you got the memes about stonks always go up but how do they go up in theory um, it's because a company should be worth more today than it was yesterday and so that stock is valued more and really it's signaling that the market value of a company is more so let's just take a scenario let's say that i'm a business leader and i come to you and i say hey uh, i want you to give me ten dollars i'm going to give you half of my company which is worth twenty dollars you have a share and I have a share. We each own half of it. So the company is worth 20 bucks. And I take the $10 you gave me and I go buy a widget, just anything, make up a thing. Uh, and let's say that widget's worth $12. So you gave me 10, but I went and got something worth 12. So now I've added value to the company. The company is actually worth $22 now. And so even though I diluted my company, the total size of the company got bigger. Uh, and your share is now worth 11 bucks. And so I've added value for you by spending the money you gave me wisely. Say I can do that again. And so I go to another investor and now our, our company's worth more. Let's say they gave me $11, but now we've got three shares. So I've diluted. 
you know, we went from two shares of this pie to now there's three and you only have a third of the company. And you're kind of saying, well, hang on, my share is only worth 733 now. But let's say I buy another widget. I'm just making up numbers, you know, easy to do here. I promise you we'll bring this back to an AMC example in a bit so that I'm not just making up numbers. Um, so you're saying, wait, you diluted. I gave you 10 bucks. Now my share is only worth 733. But now I go buy another widget that's worth 15 bucks. So our three shares are worth nine each. Well, you're still down. But what if each of those two widgets was actually not only worth that amount today, but was going to produce cash flows in the future? for years on end, now it's bringing in future value. So next year, let's just say because it brought in enough cash, so I'm, I'm just kind of taking 20% gains here. Our three shares are worth 1080 each. And then the next year they're worth 1296. And then the next year they're worth, uh, you know, but basically by year three, even though in, in sort of year one you were down, by year three, uh, you're up 30%. Because I went and invested the money you gave me wisely and I did dilute, but I diluted to raise capital and I used that capital to add value to the company and bring the value of your shares up. By the way, everything I'm saying, you can go find a Warren Buffett video on this. If you kind of probably just Google Warren Buffett dilution, uh, it's years and years ago and he kind of gave a speech on exactly all of this, saying if, if you believe in him as a, in an investing leader, as a company leader, then allowing him to dilute would actually raise the value of your shares because uh, if, you spend ten dollars but bring in twelve i think it's not hard to see how you've added value to the company not decreased so i just want to really hammer that concept home um, and this is why it's called capitalism by the way you raise capital and you use it to create value and without getting philosophical obviously we can all you know get political on on, on the values of capitalism but i'm not here to talk about pros and cons there right now so the lesson in a normal world stocks go up due to value creation Either there's perceived value in a stock, so people invest based on speculation, or there's actual gain in sort of the, the profits of the company um, because they've invested capital wisely. So I just let's have that concept in our mind and let's keep talking through this. So first off, what about the squeeze, right? So that's one of the main things that we all as apes are sensitive to uh, dilution because does that hurt the squeeze? So I, I want to actually focus a little bit on the short thesis itself. If I said the short thesis in one sentence, I'd basically say, um, and this is what a short is saying. This is not what I'm saying. Go look at my receipts on Twitter. Go look at my receipts on Reddit. Uh, I think you'll understand I am not a short. I'm a long. Okay, but the short thesis would be cash burn is significant enough and future debt payments are high enough that AMC is going to ba go bankrupt. How many times have you been trolled on various threads with people trying to say that who are complete strangers just jumping on your thread and you're like, who are you and why are you here to do this? So that's the short thesis in a nutshell, basically cash burn and future debt payments, right? The debt that's due in 26 and 27 and 28 and 29. Most of it's farther out. Okay, first of all, just to be super clear, I don't agree with that thesis. That's why I've highlighted this. I just cannot stay, say clearly enough, I do not believe AMC is going bankrupt. Uh, but let's just entertain it for argument's sake. So if you want to kill the short thesis, okay, well, what would it take? Um, and what that looks like is one or both of two things, in my opinion. First off, profitable cash flows. Uh, you know, if AMC is bringing in more money than is going out, you can maintain your debt. That's being solvent. It's called being solvent. They would be able to pay their bills, keep the lights on, and now you're back to that adding value. Think back to those widgets and the cash flows that I talked about. You're bringing in value to that pie. You're adding to the market cap. And you're never going to go bankrupt if you have positive cash flows. Uh, what's more, you can easily refinance all the debt. So that's why that positive cash flow uh, piece is a big deal. You know, do you have house payments? Have you ever refinanced those? I have. As long as I have the cash flow to make the payments, the bank is happy with me. So, you know, we know that there's an improving movie industry. We know they're diversifying revenue streams, uh, popcorn, Zoom meetings, all these kinds of things. Um, and so, I, and if you look at other videos of mine, by the way, I mentioned I have a background in forecasting. Um, you can go see my outlook on 2023 and, and even 2024. Um, I'll have to do a revised one. You know, we've learned a lot more since I made those videos, but they're still directionally, I would say, correct, even if I would change the numbers a little. I'm very bullish on the future of the movie industry. So that's one thing that would break the short thesis. But the other is access to capital. So if AMC has access to cash, can get more cash, um, even if it's just what you call on the shelf, these shares that, let's say, they haven't sold into the market, but they could sell if they wanted to. 
if you were a short and you knew AMC can get the cash anytime they want it, then you know you're at risk because there could be an announcement coming any day. You wake up in the morning and it's all over the news that AMC is debt free or something. Or Adam and the executive team have invested in a new business that is highly, highly valuable and they got it at a big discount because someone else was distressed. So that access to capital uh, really kills the short thesis and as does the cash flow. Um, note at the bottom here, hopefully this uh, text isn't too small. Hopefully you can see this. I did not say being debt free is what breaks the short thesis. You know, you, you can go out and look, there's a lot of really healthy companies, you know, look at Nike, look at Apple, look at some other big companies that are making a lot of money, a lot of profits, have great cash flows and have debt. You don't have to be debt free to be profitable and to be healthy. Um, in fact, you could be debt free and still be burning cash and actually have shorts target you. Um, the key is having positive cash flows. Now, paying off debt can be part of that, right? Because it, it reduces your expenses. It reduces your um, interest payments in particular. That is kind of burning cash. Um, but just be really clear, if you were a debt-free company that still had more expenses than revenue, you're burning cash and you're going to have to take on debt in the future or go bankrupt because you can't pay bills, that kind of thing. So um, that's why I'm really just highlighting, look at these two, profitable cash flows and access to capital. Those two things break the short thesis. Okay, but get to AMC, bruh. Let's talk AMC. By the way, I, I have three kids. They really hate when I say bruh. So this is for them, just a little tease. Um, so recently, let's think of through a little bit of kind of a, a, an actual real life example. Recently, AMC, you might've seen, they purchased an Arclight location in Boston. Uh, it's a brand new building. Uh, it was built in 2019. You can go just Google Arclight Boston AMC and see about this. Uh, it shut down due to COVID and then basically just sat. Now, you know, just think if you bought a brand new car and put it in the garage a couple of years, it still doesn't have miles on it. It's still looking great. It's in great shape. Someone just needs to operate it um, in terms of this theater. And so Adam got that um, at a decent discount. It's going to reopen in spring of 23 coming up here. So, and if you go look at my other um, videos, I even show you a little bit about which movies are coming out and when they're coming out and all of that. There's a vastly improved movie slate in particular starting Q2, then Q3 is really huge. And then 2024 is just really, really big. Uh, so this theater will open in time. It's a brand new theater, barely used, really only used a couple months. So just think of the quality of the seating in the theaters and, and all of that. It's, it's going to be really nice. I'd love to go if I could, but I'm on the West Coast. So that's going to open just in time for this vastly improved movie slate. And so you understand those revenues that you would get from that property are not currently ref reflected in the stock. Now think back to what I talked about, capital, how you create value, what if there's future cash flows. So what happens if that location is a profitable location and starts bringing in even more cash for AMC? It cost money now. He had to buy it now. So he needed capital now to go buy that, but it creates future cash flows. So I'll just make up numbers here. And I, I'm not at all suggesting that these are the right numbers for a theater. I, I don't even think they're close. I just made up numbers out of the air just for an example. Okay, so just go with me here. Um, let's say he bought a theater for $5 million. Like I said, completely made up number. You can see that in writing here, just to be really clear. Uh, but let's say it returns a positive cash flow of about 600 k a year. So that'd be like a 20% yearly return. It would pay itself off in about four years. You'd kind of have all your money back. And it would greatly add to the market cap because of the value. So stocks tend to price in the value of future cash flows. Look up uh, a metric called price to earnings. That's something I look at a lot. And you know, maybe I'll make another video about price to earnings uh, valuations, because as we go through this inflationary time period, I think that really matters. Um, it's why I knew Amazon would go down and Disney would go down and Target and some other things. Um, and so I think in 2023, there's going to be a lot more understanding of value investing, but I'm getting a little off topic here. So let's say he invests in the theater and it's bringing in enough cash that it's adding to profits. That's something called accretive. So creative is kind of the opposite of dilutive. A creative is something adding to value, like snowballing, adding to um, increasing. I would personally, as an investor, give him the shares to do something like that. If I knew he was going to go invest money that would actually bring in more money than he invested, I win as a shareholder because my pie 
my company's market cap is going to increase and therefore my share is going to have value added. He's doing accretive things with the capital we give him in that scenario. You know, it's just a scenario, so you have to decide if you think that that's happening with him. But here's a real life example from just recent weeks. He went out and got the Arclight in Boston and he's going to open it up. So let's just actually use um, real life today's share counts with AMC. So right now, um, if you assume a reverse split, if again, in my other video, by the way, I walk you through how many APE there are, where those came from, how many AMC we still have, if you combine them, what that gets you to. So that's what this number here is. 141.72 million shares, let's call it, post reverse split. Um, and I'm just making up a, a market cap. This would be a little bit above where we closed uh, yesterday. So I'm, I'm talking today on uh, Saturday, the 31st of December. Uh, this would be a little bit above where we closed yesterday in terms of market cap, but, but it's close to where we've been recently. And, and I just wanted easy math with this $30 a share. So let's say we do the reverse split. We're sitting at $30 a share post reverse split. That's a market cap you can see here of four and a quarter billion. So if you, let's say you sold 10 million shares, again, just for easy math, no reason I picked that number at all. Um, that would be $300 million he could add. Although actually I'm gonna show you in a minute kind of a spreadsheet view really be like you need to take out um, fees they tend to have fees um, you know commissions for selling shares so let's say it's something a little less than 300 million dollars and if no value is added so he just got a bunch of cash but didn't add value to the company um, and it didn't sort of threaten shorts nobody closes so forget squeeze for a minute too and and really in your mind separate value creation versus a squeeze kind of two separate things although related uh, so let's say no value is added. He sells these 10 million shares. It dilutes by 7%, basically. So you've added 7% more shares. You've cut the pie into smaller pieces. Uh, the new price then would be 28 bucks, basically. So if the market cap doesn't change, the size of the pie doesn't change, then sure, you know, Gasparino is going to get on the air and say, look at you stupid apes. Look at this dilution. You guys are idiots. Sky is falling. Get out, get out, get out. Right? We all know how that goes. But what if... You know, I just gave you an example. I'm reasonably certain he's going to get a positive return on that Boston property. Um, let's say he gets a 20% return. And by the way, I think I've told you in a couple videos, I worked for a very large company. We tended to have what we called kind of a, a benchmark like cost of capital or a return rate we needed to have for any project we'd get into. And so I, I even had to do ROI um, documentation for projects and like pitch them to the, the highest levels. We're talking COO, CFO of a Dow Jones company. And I would have to show, can I get to this return rate? And so it, I could want to look at an internal return rate, ROI. There's a lot of things you can look at. Um, ROIC is another one. So the point is, most savvy businessmen, and Adam clearly is, won't even really take an action uh, with capital if they don't get a certain return. And so when I'm talking about a 20% return, they probably have a little bit lower um, capital rate that they're using than that, but it, it's a pretty reasonable number is, is what I'm getting at. And, and I won't be surprised if they're beating that with this Boston property. Um, and, and you could even say like, for instance, the debt pay down based on the cash flows because of the expense savings and based on just the um, debt reduction itself. And usually he's getting a discount when he pays that off. You can figure out pretty quickly, there's a return immediately on those. Um, and some of those recently have actually been better than a 20% return. He's gotten on some, I think, like a 33% savings on debt. That's basically an immediate return. So let's just say he sold these 10 million shares and he gets a 20% return. That would actually bring the market, it would, it would add value, and it would add enough value, it would create um, basically a market cap of $4.6 billion, and every share would be $30.37 at that point, even with the added shares. Um, so you can see that's then not even counting future cash flows. So let's say in future years, it keeps adding to the value of the shares. So there is a way where you can dilute, which is the piece the Gasparinos of the world are going to talk about. Oh, dilution, dilution, dilution. But you notice they never talk about the next step. Why did you dilute? What are you going to do with that capital? Will it create value? And so I'm just painting a scenario here that's not too hard to, to kind of... Um, I don't know, it's, it's not unreasonable, and it would actually raise the value of all the shares, both the new and the existing. And let's just look at that in spreadsheet form for those of you who'd rather see it that way. So what I just walked through, you can, I'll just go left to right here. We said there's these 141.72 million shares. 
let's say they're at a price of $30, that's your 4.2 billion market cap. Now what if he adds, um, right in the middle here, this dilution shares I called it, adds 10 million. So you can see now you got 151 million. If you sort of push that into the same market cap, uh, then the math gets you to $28 a share. And then you can see that's 7% dilution. The stock price has gone down 6.6%. Uh, or it'd have to go back up 7% to get to back to your $30 a share, look at it that way. Uh, but you've raised this 200, I, I just assume like 1% fees, maybe it could be more, you could change that number. So in this case, you've raised this $297 million of capital. And so then let's say, you know, I talked about this 20%. Let's say he adds 20% value because he invests that wisely. He buys regal properties or he rolls out popcorn or... You know, he gets a great deal on savings on debt and pays that off. And it's like an immediate return plus the future cash flows of not having interest payments. Um, and so in this case, I've said, all right, 20% over and above the 297 raise, that's your value added here uh, or the you know, kind of the total capital. And then um, what does that do to the stock price? So if you add that back in, then there's your 4.6 billion and it gets you to the 30, 37 on the price. So let's just talk through a little bit of kind of how I look at all of this. First, we've kind of talked about if Adam uses um, capital to deleverage the balance sheet, that just means pay off debt um, or add kind of equity and assets, basically make the balance sheet look healthier, that uh, hurts the shorts because it removes bankruptcy risk. So that right there is good if he has capital. Uh, if he invests capital in positive return ventures, that's what I just was kind of walking through scenarios there. You know, admittedly, I told you I made up those numbers, so let's be cautious here. But, but if you believe he's smart enough to invest in value added, um, or I'm using that word again here, accretive ventures, then um, he's actually adding more value than he dilutes, and you come out net positive. You're actually happy as an investor because your share is worth more, even with dilution. Um, if access to capital enables him to move AMC to positive cash flows, so, you know, it's going to take money, I said in the other video, even just to roll out popcorn. That, that's an investment up front to get that going. He made an investment with the Boston property, um, and I'm sure there's maybe a small amount of refurbishing to just get that ready, even just as much as putting AMC signage and branding on it. Uh, that costs money, but I believe there's a return on that investment, and so I'm okay with him spending that money as an investor. Um, so if he access to capital enables him to bring AMC to positive cash flows, that also kills the short thesis. So for me, then that means the real question is, do I want Adam to be able to do those things? Do I want him to pay off debt? Do I want him to add new revenue streams like popcorn? Do I want him to take advantage of future merger and acquisition opportunities? You know, he told us last week that, uh, and it's an 8K filing, you can go look at this. Um, I think it's the one on the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken, it could, maybe it's the 21st. Um, but he said he walked away from negotiations um, with uh, Cineworld. I hope I'm saying that right. Sometimes I mix up, guys. You got Cineplex, Cineworld, Cinemark. I think it's Cineworld, but I, I could go back and double check that. But essentially, I believe that was over Regal Properties. Um, or, by the way, the whole Cineworld, Cineplex thing gets you some Canadian properties, too. So Canadian apes, you're wanting AMC to show up in Canada. Well, he needs to have access to capital to do that. And the reason he said he walked away from those negotiations was think about um, and watch my other video if you want to see the math on that. He was having to sell Ape, and Ape was at that time in you know like sixty nine cents a, sh a share. That's that's really dilutive for us. You have to sell a lot of Ape to get enough money. So that's why I'm pro conversion. But go to the other video for that. Uh, but anyway, so for me the real question is, do I want Adam to be able to do these things? And I mean you can hear for me generally it's a yes. But I want, to, I want to talk through also finally just the difference between having access to capital versus actually using that capital. Uh, and that for me is also in my mind as we vote on shares for him. So most discussions you'll see, and in particular from shorts and shills, is um, when dilution happens, here's what that means. And they just focus on that piece of it, right? Now I'm refocusing myself and maybe some of you on the next step, which is, okay, well, how is the capital being used? that the dilution drove, right? It creates capital, it's not just dilution, there's a next step. But also, even just having access to capital in his back pocket kills the short thesis. Let's just talk through why. So um, if he thought he could uh, improve cash flows, he could go access that capital and make a move. 
if he thought he wanted to reduce debt and was getting a discount on the debt, you know, we talked about that, um, he could go do that. If he saw a strategic investment and there was an opportunity that came up, basically I'm saying you could be opportunistic. And here's the point on that. That means if he has shares, and I'm, I'm really just thinking if I was the CEO, I'm not necessarily just selling all these shares day one. It's not like some big bang, okay, I have the shares, I'm selling them all. Just the fact that he has them in his back pocket, it's like bullets in the chamber. You don't have to fire them, but it sure is nice to have them when you need them. And it's a heck of a deterrent to bad guys. So giving him shares, this is why I was a yes in 2021. It's why I'll be a yes now. You know, I, I, I can't be um, clear enough. I'm not trying to push anyone to agree with me. I'm just telling you the way I think. Uh, but him even having that in his back pocket is already, it's kind of a, a death knell to the short thesis. Because if I was a short, I'd be looking and going, oh, geez, he has everything he needs. They're never going bankrupt. Meanwhile, I've got my cost to borrow I'm paying. Um, and this cost me to stay in my position. And they're never going to go bankrupt. So at some point, I'm going to be tired of waiting. So in summary, um, dilution by definition does mean each share it represents a smaller percent of the total pie. But I would just say, you know, really think in percents, because if the pie is bigger, dilution can be positive as long as the capital is used to create more return than it dilutes. So, and then also, if you want to squeeze, you need the short thesis dead, which it comes from one of these three things, really. Positive cash flows, access to capital, and a healthy balance sheet. And really, all those three are kind of related. And I've kind of talked through that in the other video and this video enough. Maybe I won't highlight that too much now. So thank you for checking this out. Um, I know that can be a little dense, but I just wanted us to really understand dilution. And I wanted us to understand how value is created, which is really through the wise use of capital. And ultimately, I believe Adam and this, and this executive team have shown themselves to be wise with the use of capital. So appreciate you sticking around and let's go.